Hi everyone, let's have a look at my preferred and alternative medium time frame and low time frame Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the alternative bearish scenario where we're looking for an impulsive structure to the downside in a five wave move with inside wave three, which usually is the biggest and strongest wave, another five wave move to the downside over here. Now I have three reasons why this is an alternative scenario and not a preferred scenario. And the first two are written in the text box over here. So if we look at the volume, if this is a wave three, of a bigger wave three, you really want to see volume pick up while price is moving impulsively to the downside. However, if we look at the volume over here, it has been very, very average. It is basically similar to the rest of the whole range that we had. While usually if this is a really wave three structure in an impulsive move to the downside, you want to see volume move up, up, up. Like you want to see volume increase while price is moving to the downside. And that is not something we are seeing at the moment, which makes an impulsive scenario to the downside unlikely. The second reason is that usually if you have a one, two, one, two scenario, you get some sort of a diagonal form. So this then being a one, two, and then the second one is ending below the first wave one before then you get another two and then a bigger three to the downside. But as you can see, this wave one being the second one is not below the first wave one. It's actually above, which is not something you like to see. And the third reason, this is an alternative, is because price almost is hitting the invalidation at 27.6K. Because if this is an impulsive structure in a one, two, three, four, five, you do not want to see wave four entering the price section of wave one. That is not allowed in an impulse following the Elliott wave rules. And that is almost something that is happening. Price already crossed the 0.3A2 and the 0.5 is a maximum target for a wave four. However, the 0.5 is above the invalidation level. So it doesn't make even sense to hit the 0.5 because this whole impulsive structure is gonna be invalidated anyway. So in this particular scenario, you don't want to see price hitting the 27.664 level over there as that is the invalidation of a whole impulsive structure to the downside. Now, for me, it's an alternative anyway, but I do think it is good to know and keep that level in mind. If you then look at my preferred scenario, I already have for basically a week or many, many days, is an ABC structure. So we have a five wave move in A, three wave move in B, and then another five wave move down in wave C, where the target area we've been looking for is between the one and the 1.236, which was between 25.9K and 25K. Now, if this is a wave C, the volume is actually matching very, very nicely because in a wave C, you want to see the volume of wave C be quite similar to the volume of wave A. And that is also the case because if we look at the volume of wave C over here and we look at the volume of wave A, it's quite similar. It is not increasing like you expect with a wave three. So that is very nice. And also the main reason why I was looking at this wave structure for a wave C. Now also wave C fits very nicely looking at time because this wave C is about 62% of the time it took to develop wave C compared to wave A. So wave C is a little bit shorter in time compared to wave A, but that is no problem as I like to see wave C being ending between the 0 0.618 and the 1.618 FIP time taken from the high of A to the low of A to the high of this wave B. Because in Elliott waves, you do like the waves ha don't only have a price relationship, but also a time relationship. That's very important. Now, the potential trading setup we had here was entering at the one to one stop loss below the 1.618 as the 1.618 is a rare target for a wave C. And then we're expecting a continuation to the upside. If we then look at the range over here, we have a volume profile pulled from the 17th of March, which basically was the beginning of this range to where we are today. And usually, you know, there's like this typical, like, I guess, saying that they say trade the range until it breaks. And it has been true for basically the past couple of weeks where trading the range would have been very, very um, profitable, let's say. Now, we had this little bit of a move below the value area low, which is the blue line over here. And now price re-entered the value area of this range. And that is quite important because if you move outside and then move back in, maybe with a little bit of a back test, it's quite a high probability you're going to move to the other side of the range. And with the bullish scenario from an Elliott wave point of view, with the end of wave C being here and looking for upside, this is actually something you like to see. So in this particular scenario, what happened on the four hour time frame? First, we found a little bit of resistance at the value area low, bit of a move to the downside before then the next four hour candle over here, 
closing inside the value area of this range. Now, one could wait for a backtest of the value area low, a continuation to the upside, and then entering the moment, at least you know, from an educational point of view, entering the moment this high then is taken. The more risky setup is just entering the moment we re-enter the value area low and close a four-hour candle, where we're then looking for upside, where the first main target is the point of control at 28K, and the second one is over here at 29.2K, which is the value area high of this volume profile. However, just above the value area high of the volume profile, we have a triple top, one, two, three. And I bet you there's gonna be some interesting liquidity above these highs. So I do think once we're gonna move up to the value area high, it is very, very likely we're gonna grab these highs as a bare minimum, if not continuing to the upside, and maybe even take the 2022 range highs at 32.4K. That is a level I've been talking about for weeks already, uh, but price decided to move to the downside first. So maybe if we move to the upside, because no one knows what price is gonna do, but maybe we're finally gonna reach that level. Uh, the potential trading setup we then had, of course, the safe and risky one already explained. Stop loss below here because that is the clear invalidation for then a move to the upside. No financial advice. You need your own plan and your own strategy. If we then look at the lower time frames and I open my target box, it's been playing out very, very nicely so far, right? So what we've been looking for in the bearish scenario, that is, is this being a wave W and then an expanding flat. Then you have a wave X and then eventually you're looking for a wave Y to the, to the upside. Now, this wave Y is not a very clean, nice three-wave structure, to be honest. So again, the bullish scenario is preferred also on the lower time frames. Uh, but it's at least always good to think about the bearish scenario because we are at resistance and the target area for wave Y is between the 1 and the 1.236, which is where we are right now. Also, we have a target box over here for some resistance between 27.5K and 27.7K, which consists of a daily naked point of control and a weekly naked point of control. And the daily naked point of control sits at 27.7K and the weekly naked point of control at 27.6K. So those are two levels you definitely want to write down in case price is gonna move to the upside and hit these levels because they can act as resistance. So as mentioned, after then this being the target area for wave Y, and if Y is going to be finished over here, we expect a move to the downside. Now, because this is resistance, one could range here for a while or potentially move to the downside anyway, also in a bullish scenario. But in the bearish scenario, you expect continuation and at least this low to be taken. If we then move to the bullish scenario, which is the final scenario I like to show you, we're thinking about an impulsive scenario. So in this scenario, we then have the low being made. This is a five wave in a wave one being a one, two, three, four, five wave move to the upside. Then you have a complex correction in a wave two, which was incredibly shallow, actually, a very shallow retracement in a wave two. Before then, now a wave three to the upside, where this is only the first part of eventually a bigger wave three to the upside. So the moment this low is taken, I think it's going to be quite unlikely. We're still in a nice impulsive structure for a bigger wave three. Because if we open the volume as well, you can see even on the lower time frames, the volume has been increasing. So this wave two over here, very, very, very low volume. And the moment we are moving to the upside, you can see that the volume has been increasing as well. So preferably, price also in the bullish scenario is not going to find this low over here, but continues pushing to the upside. Of course, because we are at resistance, price can range like for a bit, maybe take the high, move to the downside. Like there's some structure, might enter a little bit of a gap over here. I don't care, but as long as this low is not taken, in my opinion, we are still in a nice impulsive structure to the upside, which is then the bullish scenario. So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the macro and the high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.